in our way. So today we're talking about from idea to manuscript, how to brainstorm a novel in Scrivener. And this is something I'm uh, really passionate about. Uh, I've, you know, I've done a lot of brainstorming in Scrivener and I have a lot to share. So let's dive right in and let's talk about it today. So first and foremost, for anyone who is new here and doesn't know who I am, my name is Oliver Evanson. I'm a writer, I'm an editor, and I'm a Scrivener writing mentor largely thanks to this exceptional software. And for the better part of 15 years, I have used Scrivener to improve my own writing and editing skills, and I'm eager to teach you these skills in my position as the outreach specialist for Literature and Latte, the creators of Scrivener and Scapple. Now, I love connecting with other like-minded writers like you, so if you'd like to connect with me, please send me an email, or better yet, join one of my email lists. I frequently send out valuable tips and techniques and tools to help you become a better writer. And all subscribers do receive a free copy of my free starter novel template, which is excellent. It's a great place to begin. Um, and of course, if you'd like to see what I'm working on personally, you can go to my author website, OG, OG, sorry, oliverevinson.substack.com. I'd love to see you there. Got some great content rolling out. Okay. Let's talk schedule real quick now that we're a little better acquainted. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead today and we're going to talk about, um, sorry, we're going to go through our introduction. And to begin, I'll uh, have a short in introduction to our topic, what you should expect to learn today. Then we'll move on to our training and we'll talk about actually how to, how to brainstorm a novel in Scrivener. I'll then give you guys some free resources to wrap it up. And finally, at the end, I will leave some time for a Q&A so uh, where I'll do my best to answer as many of your questions as possible. So stay tuned for that. That's my favorite part. I love answering your guys' questions. Uh, so let's roll and let's get right into it. Now, there's nothing I despise more than attending a live event and waiting 45 minutes before the presenter even gets to his training, if he gets to it at all. And that's why I always establish clear expectations for what I promise to teach you in each of my sessions. So in this webinar, you should expect to learn the following things. Uh, I promise to teach you, one, how to collect and organize your ideas in a Scrivener project so you can focus on writing instead of searching your computer for things, right? That's the one thing I, that's probably the main reason why I was drawn to Scrivener in the beginning is just this idea that I can keep everything in one place. I don't have to go searching everywhere to find something on my computer. I hate that feeling. And second, how to brainstorm characters, settings, plots uh, effectively in Scrivener, <clears throat> excuse me, to expertly create and organize your novel. And ideally, by the conclusion of this presentation, you will confidently brainstorm your next novel in Scrivener. Okay, here we go. So let's begin. Now, these, um, this whole concept of brainstorming uh, one thing I want to point out is that it's not like a linear process, right? This is a tool you can learn to use uh, in the various stages of writing. Oftentimes, when we think about the writing process, we kind of think very linearly. We think brainstorming, outlining, you know, drafting, revising, editing. You know, I kind of want to get out of that kind of linear approach and say, hey, yes, that kind of makes sense to us logically, but realistically, the creative process is kind of chaotic and messy, right? Brainstorming in particular. Uh, is chaotic and messy, but it remains a very powerful tool at any stage of writing. We should allow our imaginations to run free, unbound by limitations or self-censorship. Now, the aim is to gather as many ideas and inspirations together as possible, irrespective of how outrageous, flawed, or brilliant they may initially seem. Now, mastering the skill, like I said, is really, really beneficial as it can be used frequently throughout uh, the whole writing process, whether I'm in drafting my book whether I'm outlining, wherever I'm at, this is a tool that's available to me. Now, one thing I absolutely love about Scrivener is the ability to organize my chaotic brainstorming. Um, with tools like the binder, the outliner, the corkboard, I can effectively manage my thoughts and ultimately discern which ideas resonate most and then kind of eventually discard anything that isn't really needed or really isn't really useful. And even by discard, you know, you know me, I don't really ever fully delete it. I usually throw it in my trash and I organize my trash even and I keep things organized in case at some point in the future, I decide, hey, I actually do want that. I want to bring that back. Now, first, 
I need a project where I can record all my musings. Now, this project could become the draft itself, or it could serve as a series Bible, something, a place where I just kind of throw all my ideas. That's going to be up to you to decide. Really depends on the type of story you plan to tell and the type of project you create. There's really no right or wrong answer. Just choose a template that works best for you. And we'll look at that more here in a little bit. Now, Scrivener has many excellent tools for organizing all your ideas and research, but the binder is central to a successful Scrivener project. The binder allows you to break your project into manageable chunks so you can carefully structure your project. Thoughtful organization will help you collect and find your ideas when you need them. And once a project is underway, I love to focus next on the story question. This is the question that re re drives readers to keep turning pages, eager to uncover what's, what the ending is, what that resolution will be. It kind of probes this idea of why is, like, what is at stake for the characters? How will this story unfold? And in this beginning stage of brainstorming, you're going to want to explore the various themes and emotional journeys and kind of jot them down in, in, in a raw, unfiltered way. Let the words flow onto the page, and then we can then come back later and refine them. Now, there are several approaches you might consider for this next process. You could start by creating a new document in the binder uh, to outline your story question. You could alternatively even utilize the cork board with its index cards and delve directly into the story question, write a bunch of them down, and just kind of brainstorm and move things around. Um, the corkboard is really great for uh, visual thinkers who thrive with a more kind of freeform method, and we'll look at that too. Um, but as we move, um, uh, but whatever you decide to do, you just got to do what works for you. Try things out. Test things out. That's the whole point of brainstorming here. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to share my screen, and we're going to look at creating our project, kind of organizing some research ideas. Um, we're going to look at the freeform cork board, and then kind of like kind of test out our story question. I'm going to ask have you guys, I want you guys thinking right now. I'm going to pull up my chat here in just a second. Think of some story questions that you would like to tell, some ideas that you interests you. And it doesn't have to be anything perfect. It can be anything at this point. Just come up with whatever just comes to your mind and, and type it in the chat for me. I want to I want to hear from you guys. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I got all these little tools in the way kind of driving me crazy. There we go. There's Scrivener. Thank you. Okay, so first off, like I said, you can choose any template you like. And before I go too far, let me get my notes over here so I can see them. Okay, so you can use my starter novel template, which is free for all subscribers. You can use a blank template, which is great to just kind of throw ideas into. Um, if you don't plan it to be a draft or anything like that, even if you want it to be a draft, the blank template is great. You can just drop everything in there. We have our fiction template. Um, if you're doing NaNoWriMo, we do have a, a special NaNoWriMo template available for you to use. But regardless of what you decide, it really doesn't matter. Just choose one and get started. Now, today, I'm going to go ahead and click my starter novel template here and get started here. And once again, naming is helpful. The more specific you can do it, the better. But in the beginning, you may not have any idea what you're writing. Maybe just write something that gives you an idea of what you're working on. In this case, I'm just going to say this is going to be a series Bible. It, who knows? Could actually become a, the actual draft at some point. But for now, that's the assumption I'm going to make. And ideally, I'd want to save that in a place I can easily find it. I'm going to save it in my documents folder in Scrivener Projects there and click Create. And there we go. Pulls that right up for me. And okay, we're looking good here. And let me pull up my chat too so I can see what you guys are pulling up for me to, to look at. Okay. Okay, ba -ba -bum. okay perfect. So if I want to get started brainstorming in Scrivener, uh, structure is not the first thing that comes to mind, right? Usually like I'm thinking, hey, I just want to get ideas out into the page. And so, But really, we should take a minute and say, hey, how can I organize this? Not too much, right? We don't want to get too caught up in boxes and things like that, but just enough that we have it in mind. So we may want to just choose a folder. We could use a project notes folder like this here and just say, hey, this is a brainstorming session. Add a new document. I could give it a date even. Stay a session like so. And then let's go ahead and the date actually is kind of already included here, but in our metadata right here, right? There's the created date. So I could actually literally just come over here, copy that and paste it in here like this if I wanted to see it more directly and not just inside the general metadata. But there we go. 
And then I could come in here and use the cork board to just start brainstorming some ideas. So I'm gonna take some of the stuff you guys threw up here. I have Louisa, she says, what will you do for love? What will you do for duty? Oh, I like that. And so we'll do that. That's that's a great story question. So that might be one story question I have. I might even wanna change this from brainstorming question to just story question, right? Let's do that, I like that. Okay, and then I'll come and make a new document down here, bottom left corner. And we'll do the same thing. Lee says, how to disappear from the world. Okay, boom. Do the same thing. In this case, we'll just do that. Story question. And I could even right click and duplicate these. So if I wanted to do the same thing like this and keep my timing, then I could do that if I wanted to. It will add a little dash one, dash two, dash three when I, when I duplicate it like that. They'll just be aware of that. Um, Mandaris asks, what is love? Okay, baby, don't hurt me. Interesting. I like that. Story question again. You can see how quickly and easily I can just get these down in Scrivener. Now you may notice it is creating in my binder here a uh, what do you call it? Uh, a document for each of these story questions. And if I click back to the document, there's nothing inside of it. Um, and I, I'm actually okay with that because if I come to my synopsis here, the index card, which is a part of every document and folder, I'll find what I wrote there. And then actually I can expound upon this idea inside of this note. Right, But for now, to keep things simple, I'm just focusing on my cork board. This is where I can really kind of get my eyes to kind of together and just kind of put everything on the page as quick as I can. And then what I can do is I can drag and drop them around. I can organize them and say, okay, this one, this one is really speaking to me. How do I, how to disappear from the world? That, that, that one really resonates with me. And I could then double click the icon there, come inside and start brainstorming how to disappear in the world. Disappear in the world, right? So I might even come and make a little bulleted list or something. Let's do that. So delete all social media accounts. I don't know, just, just give you some ideas, right? So you can just literally come through here and then start listing out things, coming up with stuff. Just kind of let everything kind of like blah come out of you and onto the page. Nothing here has to be perfect. That's the, that's actually probably what I love about the brainstorming process the most is that I can kind of just give myself permission to just kind of write badly. Just let the bad stuff out. And then surprisingly, as I give myself that freedom, right, good stuff starts to come too. It, it gets mixed in and then you start to be able to identify the things that really resonate. The things are like, yes, that's the one I'm looking at. That's the, the diamond among the rough, right? Excellent. Okay, good, 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 good. These are great, guys. Uh, I see you got, have po posted a bunch of them in there. Okay. Oh, for some reason, my computer is not cooperating with me. Okay, so we talked about the series Bible here. We talked about organizing our ideas in the binder here. So we have our project notes. Now it doesn't have to be project notes. I could literally call, create another folder and just call it story questions, right? Or I could even call it, create another folder and call it brainstorming, right? So just be intentional. Make a structure that makes sense for you. In this case, I probably will do something like brainstorming, put it in the wrong place, and drop in story questions inside of brainstorming, and I'll take my story questions and stick them in there, something like that. Um, so it's easy when I'm looking, I'm like, hey, I'm looking for my brainstorming materials. I can come to my research folder. There's my brainstorming materials. I can come in here, I can find my story questions. And if I'm working on something else, say like characters or setting and things like that, I can come in here and find all that information. And this way I can keep everything kind of close together, not kind of sprawled and spread out all over my computer, right? It's, it's where I need it to be. And the best part is because I have a brainstorming folder, right? I can understand that this folder contains things that are kind of raw and not quite ready for production. When I start developing things and getting them more like in tune, then I'll probably take them out of this folder and stick them in other places of my project where it's like, okay, this is now no longer just a brainstorming element. This is actually a legit part of my, of my novel now, right? This is a, an important part of the story. But for now, we're just gathering ideas. Okay, so that's good. Okay, we talked about that. See if I missed anything here. 
So Kedrick, let's look at the chat real quick. So Kedrick says, I, if I start to write and I'm hitting one of the, the, the story questions, can I link that specific card to the chapter scene I'm working on? Yes, you can. You certainly can, Keldrick. That is a great question. So let's say, um, let's see. Okay, link this. Let's, let's, let's look how we might do that. That's a really good question. So let's say um, I really liked How to Disappear from the World, right? I've got my book one here, I got my chapter, I've got a scene here. How I would link that together, there's a couple of different ways I could approach that, but probably the easiest way would be use a document bookmark right here in my inspector. And what I would do is I'd come in, I'd add internal bookmark, okay? I go to my research, my brainstorming, my story question, I'd find the story question I wanna link to, and I'd add it right there. And now you can see, now I have it right there, available as I'm writing this scene right here in Scrivener, just like that. Now that's one way. Another way I could do is I could literally go to here and just write in, let's just say story question. Um, and let's give this a more distinct name. Let's call this one. Let's actually put that in the title like this. And then I'm gonna come here. I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna go to link to document and then I'm gonna look and see that actually Scrivener already gives me some suggestions of the links I may wanna use. I can click that right there. And then when I click that, it actually takes me to that. Now, the disadvantage here, right, is that when I click it, it opens up the account. That's why I kind of like this bookmark idea better because I can actually have the bookmark uh, note opened up in the inspector for viewing. Of course, I could also just click that and then, and then open a new uh, editor and then go ahead and click back and then have them both side by side. Maybe, oops, there we go, that one. Have the two side by side like so, okay? That's another way I could do it. So hopefully that helps answer your question there. <laughs> Calric, that's a good, that was a really good question. I like document bookmarks too. Make sure that that's the beauty of document bookmarks. This is document specific. So if I go to a different document, so the scene below it, that document bookmark is not there because it's specific to the, the first scene that I put it in. If you want something available everywhere, let's say this is your story question for the entire novel, right? And it kind of affects everything. So you're constantly referring to that in every scene and every document, right? So what you would wanna do instead is change it to a project bookmark and probably even just go ahead and drag and drop it directly in like so. And then you could even bring it up top. And that way, no matter where you are in your project, doesn't matter if you're in this scene or in this folder, wherever, you're still gonna be able to access that story question right there. And that's kind of the beauty of project bookmarks is that that's the stuff you use constantly, all the time, anywhere and everywhere. And document bookmarks are for files and notes and things that are specific to the scene or folder that you're working on. So the chapter or folder you're working on. So just be aware of that distinction. When you understand that, that becomes a very powerful tool for you. You're most welcome. Okay, well, let's look and see here. I also wanted to talk about, yeah, so if we wanted to just do this inside the document itself, you can see we can easily do it inside the document or we can do it directly in the corkboard. Now, I did wanna talk about the free form corkboard here for just a second. Let's go to click story questions here. We're in what I call the linear corkboard, which is essentially anything, any change I make here, you can see it makes the change over here in the binder. Now, I may not want that to occur. I may wanna kind of, kind of move things around, especially if I have like 30 or 40 different story questions I'm I'm kind of brainstorming at this time. And I, I kind of just want to kind of move them around and, and mess around with them. And this is true for scenes. This can be true for chapters. Whatever you're working on, uh, just do what makes sense here. But I'm going to go ahead and switch it over to the freeform corkboard. There's a couple ways we can do that. In the bottom right corner of my editor here, you can see there's a little tiny button. Looks like little um, uh, small uh, rectangles, index cards there. And it'll say pop up and say freeform corkboard. I can also go up to the help menu here and search free form like this. And there it is right there under view, corkboard options, free form. Whichever one I do is fine. And what that does is it allows me to move things around like so freely. And you can see nothing is changing in my binder here. Now, one thing I just remembered is that my appearance is dark. I typically work in dark mode. I'm gonna switch over to light so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see there. Yeah, it's wow, that's brightening. <laughs> it's really bright, but hey, that's good. Hopefully you can see this a bit better now. We see we can move things around any way we like to. And I find that really, really helpful. <laughs> You're welcome, Andreas. I totally understand. Um, I typically keep it in light mode and I just forgot to switch it back. Dark was better, Kale says. <laughs> It's no winning 50-50, right? 50% is like, I want it dark, 50% want it light. It's so tough. 
Uh, <laughs> I agree. I agree. I, I so much love working in dark mode. And, but if you have a preference, right, really easy to change. It's right here under appearance on macOS. If you're a PC user, check out our themes. Um, you can find those. I think if you can't find it easily, I know the on PC, it's a little bit different up here in the top menu. Just use this help menu. That help menu is right up there. You can search anything. It's great. Um, really useful for PC users who are like, I don't know where anything is. Even for Mac users, we're like, I don't know where anything is. Even me, I've been using Scrivener for 15 years, and I use this little help menu all the time to find the specific uh, menu item I'm looking for. It's just, it's that powerful of a tool. Use it, okay? Okay, there we go. Looking good here. Okay, so I think we've kind of talked about idea collection and organization. It's pretty simple. This is not rocket science, guys. This is easy stuff. But how we do it and is uh, and how we keep our files and things organized is really critical. It's going to make it so much easier moving forward um, if we kind of just have an idea of where things go and we kind of keep things in there. I mean, we're going to make mistakes. Things are going to get in the wrong place, and that's okay. But for the most part, as long as it's all in our scrutiny project, we're probably going to be just fine. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch back to my presentation here. Now, let's dive into character creation. That's my next thing. I'm always like characters, one of my favorite things to, to brainstorm. One, they're one of the most important elements of any story or any novel we write, right? And they're just a lot of fun. So let's look at it. Let's talk about it next. There's, like I said, there's no right or wrong order to do this in. You don't have to jump into characters. Uh, first, you, you can do it in any order you like, but I do like characters, so that's where I jump into. Now, this, uh, the first thing I like to do is kind of look at character archetypes. And so some people are going to love this. Some people are going to hate this. But essentially, I like to keep things in the brainstorming stage like intentionally vague, right? So I'm thinking to myself, what type of characters, one, does this story require? I know it's kind of limiting, but also what kind of characters would I enjoy writing? So I'm trying to balance those two things. To some degree, my story is going to need certain characters in it, right? And by some degree, it's going to need, it's definitely going to need characters that I enjoy to write. If I don't enjoy writing the characters, why am I writing the story, to be frank? Yeah, right? Um, so that's something I like to kind of mess around with. I ask myself those kind of questions. What um, what kind of characters does my story need? And what do I want to write? And so I'll start listing out the vaguest of vague ideas of these things. So I'll be, this can range from like heroes, to our hero slash protagonist to our villain slash antagonist and everything in between. Basically, we want to understand what the character's archetype is and how it will shape their motivations and actions throughout the story. And like I said, I'm more interested in exploring, exploring the types of characters I might use and that might appear in the novel rather than really nailing down any specifics right now. So what I'd like you guys to do is drop some stuff in the chat for me. What are some types of characters, some archetypes that you are interested in writing about? Drop it into the chat. Let's see what you come up with. I'm, I'm curious what you, what you got here. I do have a few, and I'll share with you here in a little bit as we jump back into Scrivener. But consider the types of characters your story may demand. So you can go back to your story question and look, okay, with my story question, what might, kind of characters might this story require? And what characters would I enjoy writing, right? Uh, what personas will bring vibrancy and authenticity to your narrative? Um, reflect on characters, of course, that you will enjoy writing. Like, hey, this is like a character I'm really excited about. Um, one thing for me, I'm not great at writing humor, but I love humorous characters. I love funny characters. I want my characters to make me laugh. <laughs> I want my, the, my characters to make my readers laugh. And so for me, that's like one of the first things, who's my funny guy? Who's my <laughs> comic relief uh, let me think about that guy. How can I, one, get better at writing that type of character? And two, um, how will he play into the story? Uh, can, I, can, I, can I have a comic? This is, I know a lot of times we're so serious in some of the stuff we do. Do we have anyone who's kind of lightening the mood there? You know, stuff like that. Um, so think about that and let you drop some stuff in there while you're thinking about that. Another thing we can also take... Uh, take in mind is um, the core attributes of our characters and culture. So this is where I explore their flaws, their wants, their needs, um, all the traits that will eventually inform their motivations and the conflicts throughout the story. Now, delving into your character's deep, dark secrets creates a layer of depth, allowing them for a complex and relatable black, uh, back, sorry, backstory. There we go, if I can say the right word. Okay. So, and a, and a great way to kind of keep some of this stuff together is utilizing uh, collections and keywords to kind of group similar ideas together and kind of see what kind of comes up here. Uh, 
we'll we'll look at that. We'll talk about that here. Once again, you know, we're not really here to nail down specifics, right? Brainstorming is like, let's just throw out some ideas. What are some flaws that I would be interested in exploring? What are some wants? You know, it could be wants that I personally want. It could be wants that I can't really connect with, but I want to understand, right? I want to understand the human experience. And so that leads to research, that leads to ideas, and we start building connections, right? Um, anyway, there we go. Like that. Oh, boom, 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 boom. Let's see what you guys got for me. So I'm looking here. Uh, uh, uh. Martin says it's. Uh. Oh, you can all see my notes and everything. Uh. Really? What's going on there? That's weird. Oh, you know what? I know what's going on. I shared the screen so you guys can still see. The, uh, thank you. Anyway, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you today was going to be a little rough. I'm trying out some new stuff. <laughs> it's not working so great, but bear with me. I'll get the hang of it eventually. Okay, so hopefully now you can actually see the actual screen now, guys. <laughs> Sharing is caring. Thank you, Mandras. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, but yeah, you can hopefully you can see that properly now. But yes, it works now. <laughs> I switched it on my on my uh, what do you call it? My broadcasting software, but I forgot that I was still sharing my screen. So, yeah. Oh, the joy. See, in a perfect world, I would be using the same software for everything, but Zoom, or rather my software, won't, doesn't get Scrivener well enough that you guys can see it. It gets all the text all garbled, which is no fun. Nobody can read anything or see anything. So I, <sighs> alas, this is where I'm at. But don't worry, one of these days I'll figure it out. Okay, let's minimize that there. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I've got here, Cass says, a protagonist that seems dark and does bad things that seem bad, but is for a greater good slash purpose and learning that as the story goes. I like that. Lee says, an antagonist who believes they are the hero and saving the world their way. Hmm, interesting, yeah. <laughs> that seems to be, uh, most villains think they're the good guy, right? <laughs> Megan says, <clears throat> Okay, probably not, not all villains. Uh, a, a man who seems charming at first, but reveals himself to be a cold, calculating villain. I like that, that's great. The perfectionist who thinks that is a great treat, uh, but is actually a flaw. Oh yeah, I like that. So basically a perfectionist who thinks that, yes, a trait, yes, not treat, a <laughs> trait, um, but is actually a flaw. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's a really good one where we, the the flaw is almost like, it's, it's not all in all a bad thing, but it's it's something that was good that was taken to an extreme, right? And ends up becoming their downfall. I like that. It kind of creates a certain amount of arrogance too, right? Uh, Gil says, love interest who seems perfect but ends up working against the hero. Oh, I like that. That sounds fun. And Tim says, a bad person who goes on a mission that turns him into a good person. Okay, I like that. I like that. Uh, Sarah says, I like anti-heroes. Okay, good, good, good. And I like seeing traits that as... Like, like, uh, like, like over strength. Okay, like seems traits like over strength. So I'm, I'm assuming like you know, like something where it's like you're overly strong, right? And so how do you deal with that? Like I almost think like a super, super, uh, Superman type, right? You know, kind of the assumption in a lot of these hero, uh, superhero shows is that you know you're super strong and s somehow you are in total control of that strength. You don't, you can't possibly hurt anyone, right? <laughs> yeah, not so easy. If you're incredibly strong. Controlling that strength would be a really big challenge, right? Anyway, looking good. Let's talk character creation now. Okay, so you guys, can, we're back into our Scrivener project here. Let's talk character. So I could literally just use the character folder that already exists in this uh, project, or I could create a new one specifically to for brainstorming, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a, uh, a document here. And here's a bunch of just archetypes that I came up with. Okay, we have our hero, right? Our central protagonist, you know, who embarks on the, the hero's adventure, right? And goes through a journey of transformation and challenges, right? We have our mentor. This is very 
typical for a uh, fantasy novel or a hero heroic journey of some kind, right? A guiding figure who provides wisdom and support to the hero. We have a sidekick. We have a villain. We have the antihero. I saw someone did mention the antihero. That's a great, you know, someone who, who lacks that traditional heroic qualities but often and often operates in a, within a moral gray area. We have the chosen one, also very, very fantasy oriented. So in my writing a fantasy novel, right, I want to come up with archetypes, with character things that are commonly used in that genre and i may want to just be aware of them this doesn't necessarily mean i'm going to use them right this is just me throwing ideas these are things that have been these are tropes that have been used things that have happened are any of these useful to me maybe maybe not and if there is one in particular like a lot of people especially today love the anti-hero so i may focus primarily on the anti-hero and create a special thing just for him right We'll call him the anti-hero. And then at this point, I can. this gives me an idea, like the, the general idea of what an anti-hero is. Who is my anti-hero? What is he? I can start coming in here and brainstorming some ideas. Or I can even switch over to my corkboard view, right, and type it in here, what I, whatever I want about this, the, this anti-hero. I'm not giving names or anything yet, anything like that. I'm, I'm keeping it very, like, general, vague, right? But the idea is I have it there. I can use it quickly. Looks like I got some extra stuff there. Let's move that there. But you can see here how I can just have the stuff. And I, I see, oh, I saw, let me find it. Let's see if I can find it again. The chat it disappeared on me. I saw someone mention said, uh, Lee says, I love, uh, love AI to help create real life potential images for my characters. I agree. Um, I think, you know, I know a lot of people, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in the next section, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of AI for for a lot of things, but I would agree for brainstorming, AI is an exceptional tool because basically a lot of times you get some really cool results. Sometimes you get some really subpar results, but that's the idea of brainstorming, right? That we're just kind of gathering ideas and images and things together so we can kind of bring it all into one place and then kind of decide, okay, this is kind of close to what I'm looking for, and then I can kind of build off of that. It becomes a springboard for growing ideas, right? So that's kind of how I would do that. You know, like I said, this is none of this is like super incredibly difficult to do. But I could even come through. Maybe I've listed out a bunch of ideas what they are. Maybe I've I found a resource somewhere where it has a lot of this stuff already made for me. However, I want to do it. I can bring it into Scrivener, right? I can cut it and paste it, and I can create new documents around it, and do just that, just like this, right? Call it the hero. And yeah, I love too that Scrivener actually gives us a preview of the text. You may have noticed that. So in this case, if I delete the the one you see it gives us a little preview there what's going on inside i can actually take that and cut it and paste it like so and i might even just call this this character archetypes right if i can spell that like so right and then have the general idea there i could even go ahead and nest these underneath it if i wanted to like that so i'm just kind of building a list of potential characters um, about what they are what they may do whether they have a place in my story i don't know yet that's a good question we'll see it's just a matter of building the concept right now right okay let's see here ba -ba -bong. looking good okay did i miss anything here oh flaws wants needs once again same idea so i might come in here and throw in some flaws so guys throw out some flaws for me i'm going to go ahead and create some folders here we do wants needs i could create a single folder and just have them all listed in one place um, like so i can create folders like this where it's they're all separated and differentiated once again the choice is yours i like to keep things as separate as possible so i'm going to do it like that let's make that like that so a little bit Sorry, guys. There we go. There we go. Okay. So we're going to do it like that. And I'll come in here and I'll say, okay, what are some flaws I like to do? Flaws I enjoy writing about. Right? Something like that. Okay. I could come here and do the same thing. I could duplicate that and just change that to wants. Or I could even just, if I want to, if I want to be more specific, I might actually add a flaw here. So let's see if anyone's given anything. Uh, ooh, perfectionism. I like that was one that was one that was mentioned earlier perfectionism right so something like that and i can then talk about what are the attributes of perfectionism just research and figure out and find and copy and paste and throw things in here and write it up however i want to right and then wants oh stupidity i like that let's do it let's uh duplicate we'll do stupidity let's like that okay uh, greed jealousy yep do it all and i love that i can just hit return greed 
jealousy. And so, you know, right now we might just be creating documents like this. We might even go into our corkboard view here. Let's make this big, a little bit bigger. So we can see that. And we might just be coming in here and creating new documents. Oh, my doc is in the way. Why is it in the way? But I could right click here, add new text like so, and then come in and add in some more stuff. Stingy, ooh, you know. Uh, let's see what else we got. Self-absorbed, ooh, I like that. Add new text, self. But you see how this kind of invites us to do more, to do some more research, find some more information. By no means is any of this required. Like I probably will just list out, uh, absorb if I could spell. Uh, absorbed, there we go, like so. I probably would just go through and then write a little bit about each of these in my index card, like so. And then whichever one I decide, like, hey, this is the one I really, I'm really interested in, that's the one I do with the deep dive on. And I start doing more research and finding more information. And it kind of, kind of phases into a little bit more of an outline, right, where I'm starting to really gather in information uh, and learn more about that. But just the idea of having these all together, even if I don't use them all now, who knows? I may use it for another book somewhere else. And so this may just be a place, maybe just this becomes my brainstorming process, a project where I just literally drop everything in here. And then when I need a flaw, I refer to this project. I open it up and say, okay, let's find out about greed and learn more about greed. And I could just have that kind of be what I do. It's almost like a learning project, you know, where I'm learning about human flaws and wants and things like that. Let's see here. Ba, 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 ba. You know, Lee, I'm not familiar with that MT, uh, MBTI personality types to develop characters. That's an, uh, I'd be interested to learn more about that, though. You should, uh, if you have a link or something that talks about that, feel free to share it with us. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, I'm always interested in learning stuff like that. So share, share away, please. Okay, so there we go. We got flaws. We kind of. We didn't get really any wants or needs, but hopefully you get the idea. It's not it's not any different. I would do the same kind of thing where I'm coming up with a bunch of different wants, a different different needs, and I could combine these together as need. I could do needs and wants. It's just a matter of what makes mo the most sense to you. Okay. So let's talk about setting exploration. So very similar to our character creation, I'm going to be doing considering various setting archetypes. I create a, a comprehensive list that captures the essence of the different environments, whether they are realistic or fantastical. Now, you may want to even mod use modern tools. And we talked about this just a minute ago, such as AI-generated Im imagery to visualize and kind of expand on these settings. Now, the ability to transform my words or your words into vivid images using AI is arguably one of the most remarkable outcomes of the recent AI revolution. I think it's a great brainstorming tool. Um, and like I said earlier, it is worth noting that you can do the same thing for your characters too. Now, I don't think it's great in terms of like final things. Like I don't think, um, for one, it's unreliable trying to get the same things to come up each time. It's a lot, if you know anything about that, it's, it's kind of a pain. Um, but it really is good for stimulating your imagination, kind of getting things off uh, uh, and uh, kind of get what you're looking for, the gist of it out onto an image that you can look and be like, yes, that's kind of, that's what I'm looking for. That's really close to what I'm looking for. Now, whatever you do, whether you use AI or not, go ahead and gather uh, visual references to serve as tangible inspirations and guidance. Whether your setting is rooted in the real world or as a product of your vivid imagination, um, importing relevant images can help crystallize your vision. So uh, you might ask yourselves, what kind of settings do you want to explore? Um, uh, what settings are crucial to the story's plot or themes? Now, someone who's writing a fantasy novel and someone who's writing a mystery novel based in the based in London or you know something are going to have very different narrative universes, right? N different different places, and so you need to consider that. What what are the places going to look like? What is this going to? Where is this taking place? And for someone who like me, I'm I'm very much visual. Like for me, it really helps especially setting wise, I struggle with setting. It really helps for me to kind of see that. And so I like to have a bunch of different images on hand I can use to kind of like put myself and my characters in this this fictional universe, in this fictional world, or even a real world situation. It helps to have the idea of what it might look like. So just bear that in mind, whether it takes place, doesn't matter where it takes place, fictional or real or not, do it. It's such a powerful thing. And I'll, I'll pull together some uh, setting errors 
archetypes. I have some ready for you, just like the characters. We'll look at those in just a minute. But in the meantime, let's dive into our last one. Uh, I call it plot storming. It's really just brainstorming, right? But it sounds cooler. All right, I love that. So let's talk about plot storming. Similar idea that if in case you haven't noticed here, there's a trend going on where I'm talking about archetypes, this idea of this very vague kind of things that have been tropes that have been used again and again and again. And hopefully we can see the trope for what it is, a tool. And that's it's why they've been used again and again over and over and over in stories. We can kind of try to subvert them and make them our own. And that's where brainstorming really comes in. We can try to come up with as unique ideas as possible and then kind of see what's been done and try to make some changes. Now, uh, let's see here. Boom. Yeah. So remember the goal here is you, I want to come up with as many ideas as possible. Um, this is also great for AI too, because AI can come up with a lot of the ideas that have already been done, right? <laughs> they've already been saying they've already been done and you can kind of let AI do all that and say, okay, now that I've seen all the stuff that people have done, is there anything that it didn't think of that I didn't think of? We can kind of, um, take all the, that all that stuff and see if we can find some diamonds in there, right? Um, and kind of boil it down to the essence of what it, of what we really want to write as we move through the writing process. Here, let me make sure I'm not sharing anything, right? No, okay, good, looking good. Okay, so uh, with that said, it's, you know, let's, let's look at, um, First off, we have our, our plot arch archetypes, which are pretty, you know, these are some pretty common ones. If you're writing a fantasy novel, the Golden Fleece is classic, right? Basically, it's a journey with a quest, right? They're searching for things. They're going to find something. Um, it could be, you could be doing that. It could be you write, write a passage where it highlights transformative experiences or a buddy love, exploring partnership and camaraderie. These archetypes can be canvases for your creativity. So embrace them as guides, right? These are just kind of starting points to help you elevate your, your storytelling. Don't depend on them wholeheartedly right but kind of gather them together see what makes sense what might work for your story i think that's kind of for me what once i got serious about writing that this idea that as a writer i no longer look things at thing at books and movies and things as a reader anymore i started looking at it. i mean i tried i tried to anyway i try to look at it as a writer would and say okay i can start to identify elements and it's funny because my, my wife makes fun of me all the time for it but, but i'm like hey did you notice this part of the story that was that was the catalyst you know that that's the thing that's that dr drove our hero here from act one into act two and she's like why are you telling me this <laughs> i'm like because it's really cool <laughs> yeah so be that kind of person although it may spoil it <laughs> it may spoil the, the movie or the book for your your uh your friend or significant other from time to time. It's like, stop telling me the, the story and what's going to happen. I'm like, I'm like, I can't help it. It's so obvious. Anyway, so here we go. Try not to be obvious with your plots, right? Let's try to be, uh, let's try to, uh, let's try to twist and turn and kind of keep people, keep people on their toes, even the writers. And then you might consider plot structures and things like that. Um, familiar yourself with popular frameworks such as Save the Cat. And we are going to talk about that more this week. As you can tell, I'm really leaning heavily on Save the Cat because for me, that's the one that just, when I read it and learned about it, it just clicked in my head. The funny thing is it's actually really similar in many ways to three-act structure, if you're familiar with three-act structure. It's just different terminology in many ways. I mean, yeah, there are some differences. Okay, there are some differences, but um, for the most part, it's pretty close to the same. And so for me... It just became came with a different terminology. It just clicked in my head. So if see the clack, cat works for you and it clicks, great. Learn more about it, great, and, and use it. If the heroic journey makes sense, you know the James Campbell's uh, that whole path that he you know that he identified in story. If that structure makes sense to you, use it. You know it's great. If the traditional three act structure uh, makes sense of dividing things up into three acts and the different the inciting incident and all that fun stuff that comes plot one and plot two and yada yada yada. If that makes sense to you, use it. Um, the point is, if you don't know it, you can't use it, right? So learn about it. You know, add those to your uh, your plot brainstorming sessions here. You know, once again, I'm thinking very high level. I'm not thinking in specifics at all, right? And if you really want to speed things up, this is a great a great thing about ChatGPT or AI or any of it, is that you can kind of have it kind of summarize these ideas, these plot summaries, and kind of give you an idea, okay, what is this? 
you know, you know, fact check it, make sure it's right, you know, but you can come up with a list of uh, plot lines from stories and books that you've read and have it quickly summarize those into really just bullet points and things like that. You could have it run through a bunch of different, let's say you want to write a golden fleece and say, hey, come up with a different a bunch of different plot points for golden fleece or something and you can come up with those for you. And then, you know, you can quickly eliminate the good stuff and the bad stuff. Most often, in my opinion, AI hasn't come up with anything too particularly clever. But what it does do for me is it often eliminates a lot of ideas that are kind of trite and already overused, or maybe it allows me to see something I didn't initially see, and then kind of see, wait, hey, maybe I can flip that on its head. Maybe I can subvert it and change it to something different. Um, so, you know, use AI with a grain of salt. You know, sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not, but it is just another tool, and it's great for using when you're brainstorming. So another thing I love to do, okay, I think I, I forgot to click the list uh, for that one, is I like to jot down exciting scenes in the corkboard, okay? And uh, hopefully you guys love the corkboard. If you don't, hopefully you will have to today. Um, I love the idea that I can just jot down scenes and kind of just see where they fit later on. Um, oftentimes I'll have a particular scene that I'm working on that I, just, I want to write. Um, it's been on my mind. Usually that's actually how a story starts for me is that there'll be a, a, a scene or a moment that I just kind of, I'm daydreaming about. I just think about it. I'm like, I want to write that scene. And sometimes that's it. That's all that happens. I write that scene and there's no more to the story. That was all I needed from that story. And sometimes like that's like the catalyst for me to say, hey, this is a story I want to tell. I want to earn this amazing scene I just wrote, assuming it is amazing, right? Sometimes it's not, <laughs> but sometimes I'll just do that. I'll just come up with the idea, write the scene, and I'll go ahead and uh, write it and consider if uh, what must be true for this scene to work, right? So what's gonna come before to make it happen? What's gonna come after? Um, usually it's it's kind of one of those high impact emotional scenes at the end of the story. You know, we all know like after the all is lost and the hero's saving the day or something like that, or maybe the, it is the all is lost moment. I love that moment where things are just like, it doesn't seem like there's any way out, right? And then as a writer, I get to craft, I get to decide how does the writer, how does the character get out of this moment? Um, or what would, what I think get to think, what would have led them to this moment in the first place? So um, something to think about. Yeah, it's really good stuff. Okay, so let's, let's look at that now. Okay, there we go. So we got all of our common plot archetypes. You can see the cat plotting method in this case. Uh, I have the golden fleece. The monster in the house, the white done it, the rights of passage. These are just some general summaries uh, that I have here. Out of the bottle, do with the problem, the full triumph, and institutionalized. I think and super. I'm pretty sure this is all ten that she mentions uh, that are mentioned by Blake Snyder and in uh, uh, the book by uh, uh, Jessica Brody. If you're interested in that, but these are just some quick summaries that I had uh, actually I had generated by AI for us just to see what we could come up with. And this is what it came up with. So once again, fact check, make sure this is good stuff, right? Before you use it. But it does give us some ideas of what this might be and how it works. What I'll do is I'll just copy and paste these. And in this case, we're gonna do, we have characters. We're gonna do plot. Oops. And we're gonna go ahead and open up our character here. I think I'll add it in once. We're just gonna drop this down in here. And do this as plot archetypes. And one thing I can do too that's kind of cool, actually, let's paste this guy back in here, is you can see I have both my settings in here and my plots in here. So I'm gonna actually split this by selecting that there, right click, split with selection as title like so. So you can actually use that as the title. And then I'll create another folder. We'll call it setting. Notice that it was saved inside my plots. I'm gonna have to kind of push that out using this tool right up here in the top left corner. Okay, I'll drop that in there like so. And then I can actually come and I could break these up. So we have like an enchanted forest, forest, a dystopian city, the medieval kingdom, the post-apocalyptic wasteland, the floating island, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. You can come up with your own. Um, like I said, these were just generated with AI. So they may or may not be great. They may be awful. <laughs> they may be great. Uh, they may be one that you're interested in. They may be not be, right? Um, I'd encourage you to, you know, try things out, see what you come up with, see what, the, what, what works and what doesn't. So real quick, I'm actually going to change this to setting, just setting archetypes. Since I've got those there, is there anything here? We can see what I've got. What do you guys have? Do you have anything that you kind of come up with yourself that you would be interested in in terms of like setting or plot? Let's see if I can find my chat if it isn't disappeared again. Ooh, I like that. Pinterest is great for lists of writing prompts. I like that. Thank you. So we could actually 
have that. Sarah said, that's actually how I started writing my novel, to build up to that random scene. Ooh, I like that, Sarah. So you're like me. Uh, you you have, a, there's a moment, right? That you're like, I, I like this this scene. You, it kind of comes to you. The muse reaches out to you. You're like, yes, that's the, that's the scene I want to write. And you write that scene. And you're like, wow, that's really incredible. Um, and it may change, right? It, it, often for me, it does end up changing in some ways or another. But yeah, a lot of times it, it's working up to writing that scene. Uh, Gail says, I reach, I often go to video games uh, or movies to find settings. So that's a good, that's a good idea. Because then, you know, you can kind of see this. If there's something that's resonated with you in the past, you're like, yes, I like that. I liked this movie. Why did that movie make you feel that way? Why did that setting make you feel that way? There's something there, right? There's a question to be had. There's a, uh, there's something to be learned there about yourself. And maybe even about others uh, for who enjoy the same type of films. Yep. And you know what? If I had some scenes I wanted to write, just brainstorming, maybe I'm not ready to take them. You know, they're not. I'm not sure if they're going to be part of the story yet. I probably would have a section here just called scenes. You know, and I might call them potential scenes. You could come up with any sort of name there, and then I just come in. I start making some scenes. Right? I could use my templates. I do have some great templates here. Uh, chapter template or scene templates, I could pull and use that instead of just creating new documents. Totally up to you how do you do that. Um, that's just one option. But basically, I just come in here, I'd start making my scenes and uh, just get started, right? Just get started writing here. Get some ideas out on the page. So it's not rocket science, guys. It's pretty easy stuff. Um, it's just, I guess, really just how do we do this in script, right? How do we organize these ideas? How do we bring them together? And once again, the choice is kind of up to you, but hopefully you can see here, hopefully you've gotten some ideas of like, hey, how I can brainstorm a little bit better in Scrivener. How can I gather ideas? How can I uh, improve my own process of brainstorming here? Um, hopefully this gives you some ideas of how you can do that more effectively in Scrivener. Okay, well, there we go. I think I'm gonna call it right there. Let me jump back into the presentation. Looking good. Okay, so moving right along, let's talk about our free resources. Okay, so I did use my free starter novel template today. So if you don't have that and you'd like to get access to it, um, just follow my link, ojevinson.com slash links. You'll see it right there at the top, free starter novel template. Um, so grab that, use it. It's a great little tool. Um, basically, what I did with that is I just took out everything from the novel template I didn't need or didn't want, didn't want to have to keep deleting and removing every time, and then threw in a few things that I, I use pretty frequently. Um, so... Use it. It's a great tool. I highly recommend it. Of course, we have our webinar library. We have our user form, user manuals, blog and video tutorials, and so much more at literaturelatte.com and also at ojevinson.com slash tools. So check those out. And of course, we have a full knowledge base available to you if you have any questions. And uh, if you're still like, hey, I don't know what to do, then we have a great technical support team that will ha be happy to help you out for free. Jen is a member of that team, and she's great. Uh, I appreciate everything she does. She's really helped me out today uh, as well. Okay, I thought I had pushed those, but I guess I didn't. Okay, there we go. So what's next? Okay, hopefully uh, Wednesday will go a little bit better. I'm gonna have to mess around with my my streaming, uh, <laughs> my live streaming setup and see if I can work something out better than today because today was not what I anticipated it to be. But I appreciate you sticking with me and uh, hanging tight with me. I know that was a little bit rough at some points, but we had a lot of fun and I think we... You enjoy yourselves. We have here, outline your bestseller, how to use the Save the Cat plotting method in Scrivener. And I'm really excited about this because once I understood Save the Cat and how it worked and how that plotting method worked, I was so eager to apply it in Scrivener. I've done it. I found a method that really works well for me and I'm excited to share that with you and hopefully that method will work really well for you as well. And that'll be Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024 at 2 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. UK. You may, you may have noticed we are testing out a new time, this two o'clock time. So let me know if you like that. Um, if you go to my uh, sub stack, you can actually see there's a poll there, that my last post. Check out at, um, check out the poll. I do list a bunch of times that I have available that work really well. Um, if this is a time that works for you, let me know. If it's not, that's fine. I just want to figure out where we need to end up in terms of timing so that we can get the most, uh, so more people have the opportunity to attend these sessions live. That's our goal. We want to make sure everyone has that chance as best as we can. Um, so there we go. Now, of course, I know um, this is really important to me, guys. Did I deliver? Um, do you feel like you're a little bit more ready to brainstorm your next novel in Scrivener? Hopefully you got some ideas how you can still keep things organized despite that process being a little chaotic and kind of crazy. Um, if, if you did, great. Love it. If there's room for improvement, let me know. I'm happy to hear it. I can take feedback. I love it. I thrive off of it. And of course, if there are any areas that still need further explanation or clarification, now is the time to ask as we transition into our Q&A. If you have questions for me, let's dive in. 
and let's find out, okay? Hopefully I can see my chat here. Perfect says, ooh, uh, thanks again. Always interesting to see another approach. Uh, Louisie says, the rise of source books are useful for things like setting, ooh, negative character traits, source of conflict, positive traits, etc. That is so true, Louisa. I actually have the, the, the writer's thesaurus uh, books. Those are great. I think it's the emotional thesaurus is the one uh, I use the most, actually. I've been really enjoyed using that, so that's a great point. Um, I love these ideas, all as I can imagine using your suggestions of a master file of ideas. Thanks. You're most welcome. Glad that worked out for you. Uh, uh, Lee, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Megan, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, okay, so will links be sent out on sent on mail to us um good question yes um i do typically send out uh an email uh about uh when those are out are coming out so uh i'm trying to think when i'll send that when i have that sent out. I'll, I'll look at that but if you don't get it here take this link here for whatever reason if i don't get it out to you any soon you can get access to all of our things and of course if you subscribe to my youtube channel you'll get uh into uh, have your notifications turned on, you'll get notified when I drop those on YouTube as well. That makes it a little bit easier for me. That way I'm not blasting you guys with emails all the time. That's one thing I hate. When every email I sent, I really try to be more really intentional about it, make sure I'm just like sending you guys a bunch of fluff nonsense. I want to make sure that you're getting good quality uh, content in your email inboxes because, you know, that's, you know, it's important. You know, your email is, uh, uh, in, my, in my opinion, a very important place and you should get good stuff there. I hate spam. Uh, bum, bum, bum. and invite to the next event. Yes, so that's a good question. That should be in the links there as well, uh, the invite to the next event. But um, if we're... Okay, so if there are any questions you have, now is the time to ask, guys. And of course, if there's anything you can't think of right now, that's fine. We have our great technical support team. They're happy to help you out. You can reach out to me directly at my email address. I do my best re to read at least every email I receive. I can't always respond, but I do try to um, to get back to you if I can. Uh, just It just depends. <laughs> it just depends. But if you really need help with Scrivener, these support emails are the best way to go. Uh, Scrivener slash Mac, Scrivener slash Win, Scrivener slash Mobile, and scapletliteraturelight.com. They are ready and able to help you with all your Scrivener-related questions. If you have any interesting things you're interested in learning about uh, and uh, as a writer, uh, email me if you're looking uh, to give me feedback for the webinars, topics you'd like to hear about. Let me know. I like to hear those things. I, I, I do my best to try to incorporate as much as I can that uh, you guys are interested in. So just let me know. Tim's asking, I would love to see a class using themes in Scrivener. That's a good idea. I think I've, I, I, I have something that like that on my list, but I will make a note of that uh, to, to, for moving forward. Okay. Themes in Scrivener. I like that. Yeah. I think I did a, a presentation on that a while back. You'll have to look in the webinar library because I had one on customization um, where I do kind of go deeper into themes. But it's definitely worth uh, looking at again because I think that's something that we could – Definitely look at making kind of making Scrivener your own because there is a lot of customizations option options available in Scrivener. To be fair, none of them are absolutely necessary. It's a matter of preference, right? That's why, uh, you know, ultimately, if you're if you're writing a lot, right? If you're writing a lot, I would encourage you to yeah go ahead and mess around with Scrivener settings and kind of make it your own. But if you're having a hard time writing and you're struggling using Scrivener, that's probably one of the last things that should be on your mind. Learn the key core tools of Scrivener first, and you know watch some of my earlier presentations to help you get more oriented. Oh, thank you, Jen. Appreciate that. Jen found it for us. That's the customization webinar I did a while back. So I appreciate you pulling it up for me. So Gail is asking, will you cover how to integrate Scapple and Scrivener in one of these later presentations? Yes. You know, actually, believe it or not, this presentation I gave today, um, I, I kind of revised it from a previous one that had the two of them together. And so I separated it out. I wanted to see if I could do a presentation solely on Scrivener and brainstorming. Because to be fair, I do use both Scrivener and Scapple, and I do bring them together. Um, but I separated it out for this one. I probably will, will do a separate Scapple presentation. Um, I'm not I, I'm not exactly sure when I'll have to look on my schedule and see if where I can fit it in. But yes, it is. It's on my mind. It is there. I will be making a presentation solely for Scapel, and that one too. I probably will show the integration at the end of that slide of that of that presentation. How the two work together. I'll, it'll be like Scapel heavy in the beginning, and the end it'll be like, hey, this is how. If I wanted to, I could bring these together. Um, and uh, use those two apps together. Yes, definitely. That's a great question, Gail. I like that. That's an excellent question. Okay, looking good. Okay, let's see. Yeah, perfect. Great, guys. Well, this has been a phenomenal session. Really appreciate you all. I think we had a lot of fun. I think we're just about at time. Is there? Um, I'm gonna I'm, let me look at the Q and A before I jump out of here and say, hey, every, all is done. Um, if I can find the Q and A, man, there it is. 
There it is. Okay, let's see if that, everything was answered here and everything's good to go. Man, Zoom keeps changing things. Yeah, it looks like all of our questions got answered. And yeah, we're looking, we're looking good. We're looking good. So great. I'm going to call it a day for everyone. Let's just say let's meet again, right, on Wednesday. I hope to see you all there. Um, and hopefully a little, we'll have a little bit more smoother of a presentation. I'll probably spend some more time working with my presentation software this week. Normally it goes a lot more smoother than this guy. So if you're new here, I apologize. It's just been a, a <laughs> whirlwind of a day, me trying some new tools. Um, that's one thing you'll learn about me is I like to try new things. And uh, sometimes it works out great, and sometimes it just falls to pieces, just, just how it is. So, um, yes. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Jen, for dropping that one too. Yep. So thank you all for coming. I will catch you all on Wednesday. Uh, check out those previous presentations. I'll get this presentation up as quick as I can on YouTube, and we'll get it in our webinar library ad, fee, ad free next week. So watch out for that. And thank you all for coming. I will catch you all on Wednesday. See ya.